Welcome Insiders to Let's Talk. I'm Eric and I'm taking over the show today. Forget you, Trevor. I mean, Trevor, I know this is your show. I'm just going to borrow it for today. I hope that's okay with you. Anyway, on today's episode of Let's Talk, we're going to be taking a look at my 2011 MacBook Pro. I've had this for a few years now. We're going to be taking a look at is an older MacBook Pro worth buying now? Can it handle today's activities? Well, we'll find out after the intro. So if you've been watching my channel before it became Tech Inside, before Trevor came on board, you should know that I have a 2011 MacBook Pro. And well, in 2011, I bought this as my main computer. This is obviously before I got my desktop behind me. And this was, like I said, my main computer. So it was going to be for gaming, for video editing, for anything you could do on a computer. This was my go-to computer. And obviously, I had reasons to upgrade. That's why I bought my Hackintosh slash PC behind me. And that's also why I bought this computer. My brand new 2014 Retina MacBook Pro. 15-inch all specced out with an uh, i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte SSD, etc., etc. It's a great computer, and it's my secondary computer slash main portable computer. Anyway, though, I still right now have my 13-inch MacBook Pro from 2011, and I might actually consider selling it. So if you want to buy it, let me know in the comment section below. But that's besides the point. This 13-inch MacBook Pro, like I said, was my main computer, and I only got into computers really, like heavily, when I got this computer. I knew I was going to do video editing on it. And for the most part, handled video editing, at least at the start. When it comes to gaming, though, I wasn't expecting to play any games on this computer. I just really got into gaming. And gaming-wise, this computer, even though it's a Mac, like right, taking out the fact that it's a Mac, just the specs on this computer are not going to be able to handle gaming. Maybe you can play like Team Fortress 2 or Gary's Mod, but besides that... I wouldn't try to do any games, maybe Minecraft even, but that's besides the point. Gaming-wise, this only has an integrated 3000 graphic card. That's not going to be good for gaming. But for video editing, at least at the start, it was okay. Like I mentioned, I was just recording at the time with like an iPod Touch and a little Handycam or Toshiba Cam Maleo S20, I think is what it was. And that produced very small files, and that was okay. But then I got into better cameras and a little higher video production. I was using Final Cut Pro and iMovie. iMovie worked fine on the computer, but when I got into Final Cut Pro, it didn't always perform up to standards, especially when I got my new camera, the Canon Vixia HFM40, which is up there. I'm not using that camera right now, but when I got using that camera, I had a lot more bigger files, and Final Cut Pro didn't exactly handle it as nicely as I wanted to. I mean, I still got all my video editing done, but I noticed occasionally slowdowns, and also there was a occasional green frame, like this. That frame was very annoying, and that was because of my graphic card, the integrated graphic card. So I knew that video editing wasn't going to be able to handle this MacBook Pro for very long. And that's okay, that's why I built my computer behind me. So really what I'm trying to let you know is overall this computer wasn't that great for gaming and even video editing, and that has to do with the graphic card, the integrated 3000 chip. It just wasn't made to handle big things. On the other hand though, at the time the specs besides the graphic card were pretty good. I had an i7 processor, 2.7 gigahertz, a 500 gigabyte hard drive, eight gigabytes of RAM, and I didn't start off with 8 gigabytes of RAM. I upgraded originally. I was at 4. Then I went to 8. And 8 was okay. I still say when it comes to Max, you really should get 8 gigabytes at the bare minimum. 16 is more recommended, especially if you're going to be doing like video editing and whatnot. But that's besides the point. Overall, the MacBook Pro, I knew from the get-go, it wasn't going to be able to handle video editing and gaming for the long run. And I was right. When it comes to gaming, we're not going to mention that. But video editing, I mean, I can get away with video editing on this computer. I can probably try to get away with video editing on a netbook. And it's just going to be a bad experience overall. But for other tasks, like internet browsing, Photoshop, anything else you really think of, this computer might still be able to handle it. Specs really on this computer aren't actually that bad. The biggest issues are the hard drive, which I'll mention in a minute, and also the graphic card, which I already covered. 
But when it comes to other tasks, like maybe working in Photoshop, the processor on this computer is going to be fully capable of working on rendering out those images that you're working in Photoshop for or running programs and stuff like that. It's going to work still pretty well as long as the graphic card isn't as needed. And I know Photoshop does take some resources from the graphic card, but still it does perform quite well on this computer. Even though I'm saying this is a very capable computer besides the graphic card, a big issue is just using the computer as a whole. I mean, opening up programs, turning it on and off. Now it's actually on the sluggish side. Turning on this computer takes over a minute now, shutting it down at least 30 seconds, opening up like Safari, it could take a couple bounces before it actually opens up. So overall, the performance of this computer actually has degraded, I think, since I got it. And now this is kind of bashing it, but I think the real reason why this computer is lacking in performance now with just simple tasks of opening up things is the hard drive. It only has a hard drive. And nowadays, a lot of programs and stuff like to utilize SSDs. The operating system would love to run on an SSD because SSDs are like five times faster as a hard drive. If there was an SSD in this computer, it would almost be like brand new. Things would open up really fast. It would boot up extremely fast. Even big programs like Photoshop would work quite well on this computer because the processor can handle it. The graphic card, eh, that has enough RAM, 8 gigabytes RAM is decent. And the SSD will just keep all the files very loose, very open, so you can easily access them without any speeding up of the hard drive. And I think this is a problem with a lot of computers, and not even MacBooks, and that is the hard drive. Hard drives really are outdated technology now. SSDs are the way to go, or just flash memory in general. I couldn't imagine going back to a full hard drive computer. The PC behind me, even though it has hard drives or massive video files and whatnot, I still have an SSD at its heart. That's where the main operating system is, and I couldn't imagine anything else. Really, if you put an SSD in a computer, and if it still has some capable specs, it can make this computer almost like new. And I was considering to make my MacBook Pro almost like new by putting an SSD in it. Of course, I decided against that because I got my 15-inch MacBook Pro, which I oh so love. I mean, I needed something for video editing and whatnot. That's why I did it. But if you think your computer still has some life left in it, if you think an SSD is going to be worth it, I would recommend it. Now, I mean, maybe your computer is really bad, then you won't be able to put an SSD in it. But maybe it could still be okay. And of course, this is a by-person basis. If you have a really bad computer and putting an SSD in it might not actually help it. But if you think you have a decent computer, and depending upon what you actually do with your computer, you might actually be able to put an SSD in it and carry on with that computer. Of course, if it's gaming, you need a better graphic card. If it's video editing, there's a lot more things that could happen. You might need a better CPU, might need a better graphic card. Maybe you actually do need an SSD. I don't know. Again, it's a by-person basis. But definitely look into SSDs, and SSDs honestly could bring some new life back to computers. At least that's especially what I believe with my 13-inch MacBook Pro. Anyway, guys, that is the video for today. If you like this kind of video, if you like me doing Let's Talk, and you like me better than Trevor, like this video. And if you don't like me, please don't dislike it, because I wouldn't like that very much. Anyway, that is the video for today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section below. If you put an SSD in a computer to make it almost like brand new, let me know in the comment section below. Do you like SSDs? Do you, will you continue using them? I mean, they obviously are the future, but do you think it was worth it? Because SSDs do tend to cost a bit more money. And if you want to check out any SSDs that I would recommend, I've used a few, so click some links down below. Hopefully, I'll have some useful SSD links. Anyway, guys, like I said, this is the video for today. Uh, my name is Eric, this is Tech Inside, and I'll see you in the next video.